Hi guys, your ELAR -E teachers told me that one of your options for um, your last project is to perhaps write a song about um, how uh, COVID-19 is affecting you. Um, well, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis, but this is not the first crisis that we've faced in American history. There have been others, and one interesting fact that us musicians know is that whenever something significant happens in life, singers and songwriters begin to create art to express their feelings. We have already seen some songs and music videos that people are creating about how they're feeling during the COVID-19 quarantine. One of the ones that comes to mind is at the very beginning of our Shelter in Place, John Bon Jovi wrote a song and then he posted it on his YouTube channel and he invited other people who like to write songs to contribute a verse to his song. And it was his way of bringing people together, but also his way of saying, you know, this is how it's affecting me, how's it affecting you? And so he wanted to kind of chronicle what this new kind of unknown crisis uh, was doing in the hearts and minds of people in America. Um, I think you can still uh, contribute to that. So if you're interested, you should look that up on YouTube. Um, and we can be certain there's gonna be more musical songs and creations born out of this uncertain time. Uh, you can find songs about every significant crisis in history. Um, I think even you know in, in ancient Bible times, uh, there's a whole book in the Bible called The Psalms, and it's just song lyrics. And we're not sure how the music sounded. Uh, musicologists have an idea what it, some of the instruments that might have been used. We don't have preserved for us uh, written music, so we don't know what the notes were, but we know what the lyrics are. And that's what you guys are gonna maybe be writing for your project. Um, even then, he would tell the story of how he was being chased by Saul's armies. They were trying to kill him and how horrible it made him feel. And he wrote songs about um, how he wanted his enemies to be overcome. And um, he, he just kind of told a lot of the stories. Dave, King David was the one who wrote a lot of the Psalms. And he kind of just told the story of his life through these song lyrics. Um, in the War of 1812, our, our national anthem was written, the Star Spangled Banner. And in that, um, Francis Scott Key was on a boat and he was watching this battle rage between Britain and America and they were pummeling uh, bombs onto Fort McHenry and there was a, a, a red, white, and blue star-spangled banner. Uh, the American flag was hanging there and as he watched these rockets, he knew that if at the end of the battle, when it all died down, if that, if that flag was still standing, then they had won the battle. And that song, those lyrics that he wrote, um, that day as he watched that battle happen, that's become our national anthem. Um, during the time of slavery, uh, slave songs told the story of how the slaves were feeling. Um, sometimes they wrote code songs uh, to try to tell each other messages about maybe how to escape. Um, in the field, they wrote songs that would um, help them get through the day. And many of their songs talk have lyrics like my body racked with pain I wish I could go home by and by just it, they told the story of, of their um, their tragic life and um, if you study those lyrics you just see how they were feeling as slaves um, uh, after the assassination of President Kennedy some songwriters wrote a song called the summer of his years and that song tells just how sad it was that such a great leader died in his prime uh, there were songs in World War One, World War Two, World War Two. There were songs about, um, you know, uh, they were written about uh, about how they missed each other. There's a very famous song called "I'll Be Seeing You in All the Old Familiar Places," that my heart embraces all night through, all day through, because the soldiers were thinking about home, and um, so a lot of the songs reflected that that they wanted to go home. Um, some of the songs reflected, you know, write me a letter, you know, songs about that. And so um, it, it, it was, if you look at those songs, you see how people were feeling in the midst of those crisis uh, times. And during the Great Depression, there was a, uh, in the Midwest, there was a Dust Bowl. And the Dust Bowl uh, uh, 
was really tough. It, it, instead of like just wind storms, you'd have wind storms that took this topsoil and just kind of was like a, a dirt tornado. And these would roll into these communities and just wreak havoc. I mean, people would die, they'd be out and couldn't get away from it. And the dust would get in their lungs and they would suffocate. Um, uh, pe people in their homes would have the dust coming under the doors and in through the windowsills and the homes would be filthy with this dust that was just like a big wave that was coming over the um, the town and Woody Guthrie one of the greatest songwriters in the American folk song um, area he wrote a song called The Great Dust Storm that tells just tells word by word the story of that worst day when there was the worst dust storm. He even starts it out by the 14th day of April. He tells the day it happened, you know. So he was really a chronicler. In his songs he told the story. He laid it out um, action by action. Um, uh, there's a there's an old nursery rhyme called Ring Around the Rosies that some of you probably sang when you were a little preschooler. Ring Around the Rosies, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Well, we're not 100% sure, but what most people believe is that that song is about uh, a plague that happened in Europe. We know the plague happened from um, uh, 1347 to 1350. And what the song was referring to is the ring around the rosies was a ring that would occur on, the, that would kind of come up on the, a little red ring that would come up on people's skin. And then, um, a pocket full of posies. Back then they had some superstitions, like if you carried herbs or certain kind of flowers, it might ward off the disease. And then ashes, ashes really kind of changed through the years. It used to be achu, achu. It was supposed to be make, mimicking a sneeze. And then we all fall down, meant we all die. So um, legend has it that that song was written about the plague. Who would have thought, you know? Um, so uh, these are just some examples. One example that, uh, you know, kind of hits home for me because I remember this because I was a really little girl when it happened. In 1970, um, there was a, a anti-war demonstration on the campus of Kent State University. And um, uh, the night before this demonstration, some uh, of the students that were really radical had burned down an abandoned building on campus. And so the college president and the mayor of the city had asked for the National Guard to come to the town and um, uh, so they were there the next morning when the students had a peaceful demonstration and something happened. No one has ever figured out what happened, but someone hollered fire and the National Guard started to shoot on the, you know, started to shoot at the students and the students started dispersing. They couldn't believe they were being shot at and a bunch of people were injured, but four died. And several days later, um, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Neil Young wrote the song, Ohio and the verse goes four dead in Ohio uh, ten soldiers and Nixon coming um, The soldiers are gunning us down so they he told the story of that day But also in, in his case, it was kind of almost like a protest song like I can't believe this happened um, At 9-11 Alan Jackson wrote a beautiful song about that event It wasn't chronicling the event like Woody Guthrie or protesting it like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, but instead it was telling the feelings that Alan was having and people around him were having after 9-11. Um, it was just a horrible crisis when those people flew those planes into those buildings and those towers just came down and then they flew a plane into the Pentagon. And he wrote this song, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? Um, and in his song he talks about, he's just a singer of simple songs, he's not a political man. Um, and he just talks about how for him that crisis uh, wanted him to be closer to family and his faith and um, he wanted to have hope and he wanted to see love in the world. And so he took the, the songwriting um, to a place where he was trying to show the emotions that he was feeling and that he was guessing that everyone else was feeling after this horrible event. So there's a lot of ways you can go with writing a song. You can chronicle it. You can do a protest song like I'm sick of being, you know, in shelter in place. Um, you can do something that just shares your feelings. But some of the things that I would recommend is that you would only have one theme. Don't jump around to a bunch of different ideas. Those are rarely uh, successful songs. And you can have repetition in your songs. Some of the most you know, popular songs in the world have a lot of re repetition. Um, 
uh, have you ever heard Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA? He probably says that 20 times in that song. So if you come up with a real good hook, you can repeat that a lot. But your verses want to build the story. So um, uh, find that idea that resonates with you and come up with a poetic and concise way of getting that idea across. It uh, can be your chorus. And then you can include more details in the verses. I'd advise you to do a Google search of song lyrics to some of your favorite songs to do this, to find how they structure the songs. Songs, popular songs usually are verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, uh, or verse, verse, chorus. So you, you could go look at a song that you really, really liked and then see what the formal structure of that was and then plug in your own lyrics with that formal structure. And then you'll probably have a pretty nice set of song lyrics. And if they're really good, who knows, maybe someone would set them to music. Share them with me, maybe I'll set them to music for you. Or you, some of you can do that too, I'm sure. So I'd love to see your creations. I'm honored that the teachers asked me to just tell you a little bit about how music tells our stories during significant events in life. And one of my favorite quotes is where words fail, music speaks. So words are important. What you write is important. It is very important. But sometimes um, when you add that other layer of music, then it brings it to a different place where we also start to feel emotion because somehow music connects soul to soul. So good luck burning, budding, budding songwriters and have fun telling your story through song. Bye.